Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss firm optimal price and elasticity of demand. In particular, how this elasticity of demand affects the markup of price over the cost of production. The video is roughly divided into three parts. In the first part, I derive the optimal price condition that I have here. So P is equal to MC all multiplied by one over one plus one over epsilon P, which is our elasticity of demand. So P here is the optimal price that the firm sets in order to maximize profit. It's worth saying that this optimal price is a function of the quantity that the firm sets, which is why I have the quantity variable in parentheses after the price variable. So this becomes important later. MC is marginal cost or the cost of production per unit. And the term in parentheses will be the factor that multiplies our marginal cost in order to get the optimal price. So if this factor turns out to be anything larger than one, this will indicate a markup of price over the cost of production. The second part goes through a couple of examples and the third part links the whole discussion to our models of perfect competition, monopolistic competition and monopoly. I've marked these parts as chapters, the details of which are in the description below. So you can skip to the part that you're interested in if you don't want to watch the whole video. All right, so let's start with the first task of deriving that optimal pricing condition. To do this, we need to recall what I've listed in the top left-hand corner of the screen here. So firstly, that the firm sets its price such that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, and that's in order to maximize profit. Secondly, that marginal revenue is the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity. And thirdly, that total revenue is equal to, well, price times quantity. Lastly, we need to recall our price elasticity of demand formula, which I've notated epsilon P, which is the derivative of quantity with respect to price multiplied by price over quantity. Right, so we can start by finding marginal revenue by taking the derivative of total revenue, which we said was price times quantity. Now, because our total revenue is the multiplication of two variables that themselves are functions of quantity. So as I said before, price is a function of quantity and quantity is a function of itself. In order to take this derivative, we need to use what we call the chain rule. So if I do this, our derivative comes out as, well, the derivative of price with respect to quantity multiplied by the quantity variable, and then plus the derivative of quantity with respect to quantity times the price variable. Now the derivative of quantity with respect to itself is just one. Quantity moves at a one to one ratio with itself. So we're left with marginal revenue is equal to dp dq times q, plus our price variable. Now I'm going to do a trick here. I'm going to multiply the whole first term by our price variable on itself. Now price divided by price is just going to be equal to one as is anything divided by itself. So I'm not changing the value of the term by doing this, but I am introducing some price variables here that will help us. To see how we can rearrange this equation until we have price, multiplied by dp dq times q over p, and then we have that plus p at the end. Once I express the equation this way, it's clear that we can factor out one of those price variables. And if we do that, we get, well, price multiplied by dp dq times q over p plus one. What I hope you notice is that this first term in the parentheses is just the inverse of our price elasticity of demand. So basically our elasticity, but with the numerator and denominator switched around. This means that we can rewrite this as, well, price times the inverse of our elasticity of demand. So one over epsilon P plus one. And actually this is usually rewritten as well, price times one plus one over epsilon P, which is equivalent, it's just easier to interpret. I do have a video that focuses on the interpretation of these conditions or addresses this. Uh, so I'll link that below in case you're interested at all. So now that we have this condition, we can bring in our optimal pricing condition that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. 
Well, what I'm going to do is actually substitute our expression for marginal revenue into that condition. So I get price times one plus one over epsilon P is equal to marginal cost. And that's the condition that holds when the firm price is optimally. We can divide both sides by one plus one over epsilon P. And so we get price is equal to marginal cost divided by one plus one over epsilon P, which we can rewrite as marginal cost multiplied by one divided by one plus one over epsilon P. And so this is our condition that we were after. We have the optimal price as a function of our marginal cost or cost of production and the price elasticity of demand. So now we can go on to think about some examples. What we should find is that as our elasticity of demand gets more elastic, that the markup is smaller. So let's start with considering the case where, say, elasticity of demand is equal to negative 2. Well, substituting into our formula, we have price is equal to marginal cost multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus 1 over negative 2. Now, this part in parentheses reduces to 1 over 1 minus a half. Now, 1 minus a half is a half. So 1 divided by a half is equal to 2. So we get this result that if the elasticity is negative 2, then whatever the cost is, if we double it, then that's the optimal price for the firm. Let's try something more elastic. So say the elasticity was negative 4. Well, then substituting that in, we get price is equal to marginal cost multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus 1 over negative 4. Again, focusing on cleaning up the part in the parentheses, we can rewrite as 1 divided by 1 minus a quarter, which is, well, 1 divided by 3 over 4, which is equal to 4 over 3, or alternatively 1 and a third. So here the result is that if the elasticity was negative 4, then we multiply our cost by 1 and a third in order to get our optimal price. Here what we see is that the more elastic demand leads to a smaller markup. Certainly here multiplying our cost by 2 gives us something larger than multiplying cost by 1 and a third. And this result is really quite intuitive since the more elastic demand is, the less firms can raise their prices without losing customers. So we get this general result that the more elastic demand the firm faces, the smaller the markup over costs is. What we can also see from this expression is that if we have inelastic price elasticity of demand, then the optimal price actually comes out negative, which is strange. So for instance, if elasticity was negative a half, which is a nice inelastic figure, then we have price is equal to marginal cost multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by negative a half. 1 divided by negative a half is equal to negative 2. So we have a 1 minus 2 on the denominator here, which is negative 1. Well, 1 divided by negative 1 is equal to negative 1. So we get this strange result that our optimal price will be the negative of whatever the cost is. What this points to is a general feature of profit maximization that firms never work in the inelastic part of the demand curve. To see this clearly, we can now turn to thinking about our third point, which is thinking about this markup price and elasticity in relation to our model of, of markets. So monopoly, monopolistic competition and perfect competition. So let's start with thinking about a model of monopoly or monopolistic competition. We have a demand curve here, which is downward sloping, marginal revenue, marginal cost. The firm will produce Q star units, and that's where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, and they'll charge P star per unit. The marginal cost associated with that optimal level of production is here at MC star. So just to address that last point that I was talking about before about inelasticity and firms not working in that inelastic part of the demand curve, We'll just note here that along our demand curve, we actually go from perfectly elastic. We have an elastic region in the upper half of the demand curve and then an inelastic region uh, in the bottom half of the demand curve. So I do have a video that addresses and explains all of this. I'll link to it below in the description just in case you're confused about this point. 
what matters for this video is that you can see that our marginal revenue is only positive across that area of the demand curve that is elastic. Now, since our profit maximizing condition is to set marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost and marginal costs are positive, you can see that the monopolist will only ever work within this elastic part of the demand curve. Intuitively, the idea is that if we were working in the inelastic uh, part of the demand curve, then the firm would always benefit from moving towards the elastic part of the demand curve where our marginal revenue is positive. So that's why inelastic demand just doesn't work with our equation. Visually on our diagram, we can see the markup as the difference between price and marginal cost. This ability to price above marginal cost is called market power, and it comes with any demand curve that has any elasticity, so any steepness to it. Monopolists definitely have it, and also monopolistically competitive firms have it. Visually, we can see the effect of different elasticities on uh, market power or the ability to mark up price over cost if we compare two firms facing different demand curves. So here, what you should see is that the firm on the right-hand side, which has a flatter demand curve and thus a more elastic demand, well, the markup on marginal cost is proportionately less than the firm on the left. So it follows from this that the steeper the demand curve, the more inelastic demand the firm faces, the greater the market power and the greater the markup over cost. At the extreme of this is perfect competition and in perfect competition, our firms face what we call a perfectly elastic demand curve at the market price. So the demand here that the firm faces is perfectly horizontal. There is no incline to it. Now we shouldn't get confused here between firm demand and market demand, which is indeed downward sloping. The point is that in perfect competition, there are so many firms and everyone is selling an identical product. So the price that is determined at the intersection of market demand and market supply is the price that each firm must sell their product at. We call perfectly competitive firms price takers. They cannot choose their own price. The price is determined in the market. Now the firm still chooses the quantity such that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. In the case of perfect competition, however, marginal revenue is equal to the price. So every time the firm produces one more unit, they sell it for the market price. So we get the result that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, which is equal to the price. So this means that there is no markup of price over costs. In terms of our equation, the perfectly competitive firm has an elasticity of demand equal to negative infinity. So we have price is equal to marginal cost multiplied by one divided by one plus one over negative infinity. Now one over negative infinity is not defined, but what we can do here is take the limit as epsilon p goes towards negative infinity, and that limit is actually equal to zero. So we can take this term in parentheses as equal to one divided by one plus zero, which is just equal to one. So in perfect competition, where the firm faces perfectly elastic demand, price is exactly equal to marginal cost and there's no markup. All right, so that's it. That's just playing around with that condition and thinking about uh, markup and elasticity. I hope that video helped with your understanding. If it did, please like and subscribe. Uh, best of all, most of all, though, have a lovely day or night.